picking back up in 2.7 with our veloc position velocity and acceleration. And we finished here. Um, here we're going to talk about particle motion. So we have briefly defined particle motion and need to establish some vocabulary and terminology that connects position, velocity, and acceleration of an object in motion. These foundations will be used throughout our course. So we've already talked that S of t is our typical position function gives the position relative to the origin of an object as a function of time t, and that's our position function. Consider an object moving along a straight line. These objects can move either horizontally or vertically. Examples of any object, either natural or man-made. So what moves horizontally? Train. Car. Cars, trains. Oh, People in general. What? I said a plane. It does both. I mean, yeah. A plane does both. I'm not sure I'd put it in that category. It does do both, but um, the other one I have listed on here is if you think about water, like water, rivers. Okay, so list whatever you want. Cars, boats. I heard trains, people in general. I mean, I, yeah, I'm going to avoid planes. Water, rivers, you know. The ones that have just the horizontal what movement. Rivers? Water? Because if you just put you water, know what? It, it could be waterfalls, which are. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Ooh, valid point. Well, okay. So what, are you saying we should take water out and not use water in general? Okay. I see. I mean, you get the idea of what we're talking about with horizontal movement, right? Okay. Um, vertical. Waterfalls. <laughs> Write it down. Hello. The thing is, though, I need something that will go up and come down. And waterfalls aren't ever going well. I don't. Geysers. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You know, honestly, I could go with that direction because the water is going to go up and then come back down, right? Fireworks. Fireworks. Elevators. Elevators. Elevators go up and down. They do go up and down. It's more of a just a straight vertical motion, but yeah. They don't go up this way. Yeah. Okay. Um. They do in Harry Potter. Satellites. <laughs> they do. Okay. And if you think about some of the quadratic problems we've looked at, um, launching a rocket, throwing a ball up in the air. Um, okay. Or the generalization I'm going to give is anything subject to gravity. In other words, you throw something up, gravity is going to pull it back down to the ground, right? So anything subject to gravity. So um, rockets, balls. I feel like I have to put geysers in there since I'm not going to put waterfalls in there. Sorry. But I will put geysers in there. Um, generalization is anything subject to gravity. I guess, I mean, if you think about it, because if people jump up and then gravity pulls you back down, I, so, okay. Obviously, there's lots of different directions we could go with this. We got the basics, though, right? Now, the function position, S of t or x of t, gives position relative to the origin of an object as a function of t. As the object moves, its position changes over time. The velocity function, v of t, is the change of the position function over time. Remember, velocity is the derivative, right? So it's a rate, okay? It's a rate of change. So it's a rate of change of position over time. Um, it's a derivative, so it's s prime of t or x prime of t is velocity. Instantaneous velocity tells us how fast something is going at the exact instant and in which direction. That's how the position is changing with respect to time, and there's different ways to represent it. So um, instantaneous velocity, 
exact instance and in which direction. So it, instantaneous velocity being the derivative of position. So ds dt, s prime of t, v of t, or the limit as this is delta t approaches zero of s of t plus delta t minus s of t over delta t. You realize this is definition of derivative here, yes? Delta t's instead of h's, basically, which delta t, delta x, that is a common way to do definition of derivative other than h's, is to use like a delta whatever variable we're talking about there. So kind of realize that. Um, okay, so defining motion of an object, v of t. So when the velocity is greater than zero, what's that tell me is happening to the object on a horizontal line? Where's my object moving? Okay, instead of forward though, let's think left or right. So moves to the right. That means on a horizontal line, if your velocity is less than zero, your object is moving left. What about the velocity of zero? Okay, it's stopped. Now vertical. If your velocity is greater than zero, where's your object going? Up. So that means if my velocity is less than zero, my object is moving down. What about if the velocity is zero? Stopped. Now, keep in mind, that could mean stopped on the ground. It could also mean stopped where? At a max, yes. Okay, so keep that in mind that, you know, stopped, when we're talking vertical, could also mean like stopped at a max. Okay, so just, you know, that could be included there as well. And this is all because as we talk about position, it's relative to the origin. So relative to that starting point. Are we going right or left? Are we moving up or down? All relative there. Okay, speed. Lots of vocabulary in this lesson. Lots and lots of vocabulary. And I'll tell you, as I was working through the homework, I found myself flipping back and double checking things. Okay? So, speed. Remember that speed does not indicate direction and is not synonymous with velocity. I think until I taught calculus, I thought it was. Okay? So, speed is not not syn synonymous, okay, with velocity. It does not indicate direction and is not synonymous with velocity. Therefore, the speed of an object must be either positive or zero. Okay, you'll never have negative speed, which means the object, and when it's zero, the object is stalled or stopped. Speed tells how fast an object is going no matter which direction. Speed measures the rate at which the position changes. So right there, speed measures the rate at which the position changes. And this right here is key. Speed is not synonymous to velocity, but it is very similar to velocity because speed is the absolute value of velocity right there. Okay? The idea of velocity is directed distance. Is that what I want to say? I think that's what I want to say there. Velocity is directed distance, whereas speed does not have the direction with it. Okay? Okay, next page. Now, we just talked about velocity, right? Velocity was at one point, I'm trying to remember how we, I lost where I was going back to refer to, but velocity is the change Position, how the rate at which the position is changing with respect to time, right? Okay, so acceleration is the derivative of velocity, right? So that means acceleration is the change, the rate of change of the velocity. Okay, because derivative is always rate of change. So acceleration right there is the instantaneous rate of change 
of velocity. It tells how quickly the body speeds up or slows down, how fast the velocity is changing with respect to time. So here are your various notations. It is the second derivative of the position function, so s double prime, um, d squared s over dt squared. It is the first derivative of velocity, so v prime, dv dt, and that equals acceleration. So know those connections there. Just because an object's acceleration is zero does not mean the object is stopped. Okay, so we have to think that through. Think about the cruise control on a car. It simply means the velocity isn't changing. The accelerate, acceleration may function behavior, we're going to summarize it now, but so acceleration of zero just means your acceleration, acceleration isn't changing. So it could mean a constant velocity, in other words. Okay? Now, when we talk about acceleration, when acceleration is greater than zero, so when velocity is greater than zero, it means my object was moving to the right. What's the acceleration when it's greater than zero? It's going to take the object and what? Positive. Positive. But what's that positive re represent, though? Right. It's pushing it to the right. Okay, so it's not just moving, but the acceleration means the object is pushed right. To the right, that is. If your acceleration is negative, what's that mean? My object is pushed left. I technically already said this one. What about when your acceleration is zero? Huh? Okay, we're moving at a constant. In other words, there's no change in the velocity. Your velocity is not changing. So, and I'm going to write it down as no change in velocity. So can you guess on the vertical then? If the acceleration is positive, that's going to push the object up. If the acceleration is negative, that's going to push the object down. And if the acceleration is zero, guess what? No change in the velocity again. Okay, this next section is going to be huge in terms of you can use it to explain your answers. Okay, so when we're talking about free response, this is really good information of, you know, how to explain. Um, so it's techniques for speeding up and slowing down. How to know whether something is speeding up or slowing down. So the speed of, uh, the speed of an object is increasing when it's moving away from the x-axis of a velocity time graph. Likewise, the speed is decreasing when the object moves towards the x-axis. Without the aid of a graph, we know the following relationships. So, if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, the object is speeding up. So that's saying if velocity and acceleration are both positives, Right here, positive velocity, positive acceleration, your object speed is increasing. Or if they are both negatives, so you have negative velocity and negative acceleration, they are both, then your object is increasing. The flip side of that, if velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, the object is slowing down. And so if you've got a positive velocity, negative acceleration, decreasing speed, Negative velocity, positive acceleration, decreasing speed. Okay, that is information that we can use when trying to justify. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Trying to justify whether something is speeding up or slowing down. Okay.
Next page. Unless you stop me and ask any questions along the way. Is some of this sounding familiar to what you guys have already talked about in physics? So some of this you may get, you guys may be ahead of me. I can do the calculus portion of it, but you guys can maybe relate the velocity acceleration portion a little bit better than I can. So, okay. In calculus, we're often asked to analyze motion graphs. The difference between position versus time graph and velocity versus time graph. You've even done some of this back in the algebras, really. It just takes it to a new level here. But um, brief discussion. Interesting. For students who have not had a, have a not had a physics course, here's a brief discussion. You're going to already know some of this, but for many graphs, both the slope of the line and area between the line and horizontal axis have physical meanings. Okay. I think the slope of the line is the more, more obvious one to you. That's the one that we're more comfortable with. The area is the one that's a little bit different. So this is a position versus time graph, as opposed to what's at the bottom of your page which is a velocity graph. But position versus time, time is always the horizontal function, right? That's always your independent variable. In this case, distance is what we're talking about. What does the slope of a position versus time graph tell you about the object? Well, think about slope. What would slope be? Change in y over change in x, yes? Rise over run. So it's going to be the change in distance over change in time. What is the change in distance over change in time? That's velocity, yes. Okay, so right here, we're talking about velocity. And if you will, that is the change in position. Can I use delta position with you guys? Over change in time, delta time. And also remembering that velocity is also includes direction. Oops, object moves. So your slope will give you a positive or negative direction there. Okay. So this is the slope of a position versus time graph. What does the x-intercept of a position versus time graph tell you about the motion of an object? X-intercept. That's going to represent your... Hmm? Time, yes, but think original position here. Like, where are we starting type thing. Okay. I forgot that was down there. Okay. Um, and then down here, velocity, um, V being delta S over delta T. We've already talked about this. When the velocity is positive, we know the object is moving to the right. When the velocity is negative, the object is moving to the left. Do I need to put that down there again? No, I feel like I do. I feel like we've just talked about that on the previous page. Okay. So this is a position versus time graph. Now, velocity versus time. Now, first of all, we know this is velocity. And I guess I didn't point it out, but on the last one, it labeled distance here, right? It also said S. If you look at this one, we don't really have labels here, but notice what does it show here? Velocity, right? So that's a velocity versus time graph. Consider an object moves at a constant velocity of 5 feet per second, shown at right. Since velocity is positive, we know the object is moving to the right. How far has the object traveled after 6 seconds? What? 30. 30? I agree. Do you guys agree with the 30? 
Do you agree because it's logical or because it's physics related also? A little bit of both maybe? Okay. Um, so yeah, the velocity was given as five feet per second. We can think about this being, which way do I want to write it? We can think about this being, S being the velocity times, times the change in time. And the velocity, if you will, was five feet per second. And the change in time was six seconds. And I set it up like that for one. Um, that's the word I want to use. We would cancel the labels, multiplying units. Oh my gosh. Okay, my mathematical word is not coming to me right now, but realizing the seconds would cancel there. Dimensional analysis. That's the official math term there. But that would um, give you the label there. So the fact that it's going to be 5 times 6, so 30 feet. Do you see how that is under the graph, right? Okay. Constant velocity of 5 feet per second is shown right here. The fact that over the course of six time, 6 seconds, so from 0 to 6, and right here in this area is 5 times 6, which is 30, isn't it? So thus the idea of the um, area under that, which is leading us into the next piece there. Because the next piece says, what does the area under the velocity versus time graph tell you about the motion of an object? And what is that 30 feet here? So it's 5 feet per second. After six seconds, that is our, well, it's area under the graph, but it's our total distance, yes. Okay, it's represent, and that's the thing that when we go on to do those 28 questions we're getting ready to do here on the next page, you know, we're going to be going back and forth with the graph, and depending on what they ask you, you might have to look at the area under a graph to get your total distance. So the key here is what does the area under a velocity, now specifically a velocity versus time graph, right? And that is total distance traveled. Okay. Do I have anything else written there that I want? Okay. What does the slope of the velocity versus time graph tell you? Okay, acceleration, good. That's because the derivative of velocity is acceleration, right? So derivative of velocity is going to, we're talking the slope, so acceleration. And what does the x-intercept of velocity versus time tell you? x-intercept, <clears throat> again, you're looking at when that, x, that velocity is zero. And so our object is either stopped, standing still, or a stop could also represent, if it just stops briefly, then it is changing directions. Okay? So I'm going to say... Object is standing still. Or reverses directions.
Okay. Mm -hmm. We get the group here. Okay. Next 28 questions are all about this right here, yes? Okay, so the way mine's set up, I'm going to have to be flipping back and forth is what it comes down to. But So this graph, first of all, always pay attention. What type of graph is it? Velocity. It's a velocity, yes? Okay, so it's velocity time graph, not a position graph. Line it up. Line the arrows up. Oh. <laughs> line the arrows <laughs> okay. I'm like, why is why are we watching here? Why is this taking so long? Okay. So this is a velocity of a particle moving along a coordinate line. Assume the positive direction is the right and V of T is measured in feet per second. Find the following. Okay, so we've got time, we've got velocity. If this is velocity graph. That means slope is acceleration, right? Okay. Position is not necessarily listed here. Okay, when is the particle moving at a constant speed? From zero to one. Because when is velocity constant? Velocity is constant from zero to one. You can write it as zero less than t less than one. Or you can write it as interval notation also, yes? It's kind of back and forth in the homework at homework key. I noticed when I was checking. It's what you know, whichever way you want to write it. Did that homework take you long? Not as long as some of the others. At least I didn't feel like it. These notes took me forever, but. Um, okay. Interval notation. Would you want the parentheses or brackets? Just like. This we're not using equal to, so I would say parentheses. Um, I don't think anything we used equal to's here because it's on that general inter interval. Yep. Um, because at the corners it's changing. So I would say parentheses. So whichever you want. Okay. When is the particle moving to the right? When is the particle moving to the right? Which what has to be true for a particle to be moving to the right? What positive? Which? No. no. Positive. Positive. Top of the velocity. I heard positive. I was, can't get the right things. Okay, so I'm trying to give you some clues along the way. When is the particle moving to the right? So we want to know when velocity is positive. When is my velocity positive? Zero to two because velocity, that is when velocity is in the above the x-axis, yes? So when we talk positive, that's going to be from zero to two. So when is the part of, when is it moving to the left? When it's negative, which is going to be anywhere it is below the x-axis, right? So, yep, 2 to 5. So, when velocity is less than 0, so 2, less than t, less than 5. 2 to 5. Okay. When is the particle speeding up? No. It, so go back. We talked about what's the rule for speeding up. What? Well, two things have to be true for it to be speeding up. We have to have, and this is the bottom of page 144, right? Positive velocity and positive acceleration, or negative velocity and negative acceleration. Okay, so basically the shortcut here is that we are not shortcut, but the velocity 
and acceleration need to have the same sign. That's my little shorthand there. You write, you know, these are just notes because are you going to have questions like this in homework? Are you going to have to be able to figure out how did I get that answer earlier? Yes. So now velocity is positive. When it, this is a velocity graph, right? So positive velocity is above the x-axis. Negative velocity is below the x-axis. Where is acceleration? It's a slope, yes? So, and I guess I can always, you know, so right here, I'm going to just, I'm going to have to erase this later, but positive velocity, positive velocity, yes? And this is negative velocity and negative velocity. All agree? Okay, now let's go through and analyze um, acceleration. Okay, what's acceleration right here? Okay, acceleration zero. What's acceleration here? Negative. Acceleration here? Still negative, so still negative slope. Acceleration here? Positive. Does that help? It helps it makes it easier for me, I'll be honest. Why didn't I do this when I was, now, I'll, as I said, I'll end up erasing it because I write all over this graph, but, okay, so when is the particle speeding up? Two to three? Okay. So when is it slowing down? I half agree. One to two and three to five. One to two and three to five. Which, if you want to write it in here, what do we need this time? We need the opposite sign between velocity and acceleration. Zero does not count. Zero is neither positive nor negative. So that's why this is falling into neither of these categories because when my acceleration is zero, I'm at a constant velocity. I'm not speeding up or slowing down here. Okay, so we have to go from 1 to 2, and what was it? 3 to 5. Okay? Not hard questions. We just have to process what they all mean, yes? Okay, 6. When is the velocity increasing? What are we looking for here? Velocity is increasing. It's below the x axis. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Are we on? I'm on six. six. Oh, okay. It's above that. No. Velocity is negative below the x axis and positive above the x axis. But this isn't asking for positive or negative. This is asking for increase. Okay. So our acceleration needs to be positive, a.k.a. our slope needs to be positive. Yes. So acceleration needs to be positive, which in this case, it's in other words, I'm saying your slope needs to be positive, yes, because we're looking at a velocity versus time graph. So from 3 to 5. And so... There is a difference between increasing versus positive, isn't there? And you have to be very careful there. They seem like similar words, but they are very different. So, and I think Ethan was trying to do seven first, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is when velocity is increasing. Bad time for a page break, but what do we know about when velocity is decreasing? This is when my acceleration is going to be less than zero. So slope is less than zero. And when does that happen? And we can combine it. One to two, two to three. You can combine it since it is all decreasing there. Now. Okay, I didn't think about how I set this up for page breaks, but 
I should have had these two on the... You're going to have to look in your notes, right? Are your answers to questions 6 and 7 the same as your answers to 4 and 5, respectively? So in other words, does speeding up match with increasing and slowing down match with decreasing? And it doesn't, does it? I don't have the same answer for 4 as I do 6 and 5 as I do 7. And the key is, so like, when was velocity increasing? Velocity was increasing where acceleration is positive. Uh, but, like, if you look at 4... That was just same sign, right? And so acceleration was negative there, wasn't it? So ultimately your answer is no. My explanation was that velocity increases where acceleration is positive. Okay, and if you look at between the two, it makes sense there. So velocity increases. Acceleration is positive. Okay. Nine. How fast is the particle moving at time t equals four and in what direction? What is it asking here before I go back? How fast? What's that asking for, then? That's your speed, yes? Okay. So we want the speed of the particle at time t equal 4, and then in what direction? So, I'm going to get some extra things off. Times t equal 4 is right here, yes? So what do we know at time t equal 4? We have a, when t equals 4, the what? Velocity is negative 5. What is speed? Speed is the absolute value of velocity. So if velocity is negative 5, what's the absolute value of negative 5? Positive 5, right? So your speed is 5. And I guess it should say absolute value of V of 4, right? What direction? And this is where you go back and look at the, le the negative, and because it was a negative velocity that's going to be moving left in negative direction. So we would most likely assume left. So I'm going to say in negative direction. Left. Okay. What is the particle's velocity at time t equal 4? What is that? Negative 5, yes. Okay. Um, and again, negative value indicates left again, right? I don't know if you need to write that down, so we just wrote it down, but still. Average velocity over the time interval 2 to 3. How are we going to find average velocity over the time interval from 2 to 3? What do we know about velocity? Specifically there says average velocity, right? 
<clears throat> so this is more, what word do I want to use there? In a way, my brain wants to say slope. Okay. Now, how, well, when I hear average velocity, I want to say slope. In terms of how do we find slope, it's a change in something over something, right? So when we talk about this average velocity here, we want to think about the change in distance over change in time. Okay? So average velocity being the idea of change in distance over change in time. We have a velocity graph here. Where is distance? Maddie's shaking her head like, there is no distance. It's a velocity graph, yes? Where is distance? Area. It's the area under that piece of the graph. Okay. So, we are on the interval from 2 to 3, yes? So we're looking, and you guys may keep some of your stuff on yours, but I'm going to have to keep erasing because it gets too difficult with the marker. But from 2 to 3 is from here to here, yes? Your area under the graph is that right there, yes? Does that make sense what I'm looking at? Because when I say area under the graph, it's the area between the axis, the x-axis, and the graph. So we form a nice little triangle, yes? What's the area of a triangle? One half base times height. You should know that as calculus students. One half base is a distance of one. What's the height of my triangle? A distance of negative ten. Okay. So, and it does matter that it's underneath the axis, and that's a negative 10. So, I'm going to go over here. And again, as I said, we're thinking area on top here. So, it's going to be 1 half times 1 times negative 10. Over the change in time, what was our change in time? That was just 3 minus 2, so that's just going to be 1, yes? So, negative 5. Okay. So that's where that area under the graph comes in. When you're looking at a velocity graph, trying to find the total distance traveled. You're looking at the area under the graph. Because remember, velocity is meters per second or whatever. And that's, you know meters per seconds versus seconds are your two axes. Okay. Are we okay with that one? That one's a tough one for me until I figured out that, oh, but yeah, I need to look at area. So, when does the particle change direction? Where? Y2. Yeah. Yeah. You've got an x-intercept there, yes? And your velocity changes from a positive velocity to a negative velocity. And it would also be true if we were changing from negative to positive velocity, but two is the only time that happens. So I'm going to say t equals two. I mean, that's your answer. You, we found it by looking at x-intercepts, right? I'm going to say when velocity, I'm going to say changes sign. That's a good, nice, nice way to put it. So X intercepts when velocity changes sign. So it changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay. How far does the particle move during the first second and which way? In the first second, it just has, it's right up there, 
constant at 5, yes. So how far does the particle move? Well, if we're talking particle move, that's total distance, yes. If you think in terms of area, that's just 1 times 5, isn't it? So, you know, we didn't even have to think area there, but I'm trying to pull it back into that. And it also said which way? To the right. It's where above the x-axis, it's positive. So. Five units in positive direction. And the y is we are above the x-axis. Okay, how far to the right does the particle go, and when does it arrive there? Wrong way. Okay, how far to the right, and when does the particle, how far is the right the particle go, and when does it arrive there? What do we need to look at? Area from where to where? Zero to two. Yeah, zero to two. Now. I don't know your skill set or your skill level set here, but you can think trapezoid or exactly. We can think a triangle in a square, right? <laughs> I had to throw the trapezoid out there. That was exactly the reaction I was half expecting was a, yeah, no. Okay. The funny thing is, I think any math teacher you watch, they're usually going to go, I, I feel like they rarely say trapezoid. So, okay. So we have the five times one. And then we have the 1 half times 1 times 5. Okay. So let me go back here. We have the 5 times 1, which is going to be 5. Plus we have the 1 half times 1 times 5, which is going to be 2.5. And 5 plus 2.5 is 7.5. So how far does, right, does the particle go? I'm going to say 7.5 units. When does it arrive there? At what time? T equals 2. Okay. What is the total distance traveled by the particle? Total distance traveled by the particle. Now, so we're looking from, I forget how far do we go here? Zero to five seconds, yes. So we've already done the seven and a half up here. Officially, okay, so what is this down here? You can either do one triangle or two smaller triangles, right? I was just drawing that in as that's my height, right? So it's one half times base three and height of negative 10 in a way. But here's the deal, guys. If they asked for more of a displacement, like, you know, where do you end up or whatever? Yes, this is going to indicate negative. So this is going to indi indicate going backwards or left. But this is saying total distance. So just because you backtrack, that's still part of your distance traveled, right? Okay, if I take three steps forward and three steps back, that doesn't mean I went zero steps. That means I went six steps. So because it says total distance, we're going to be adding the two together. Does that make sense there? And so at that case, I don't really care that it's a negative 10. Because it's going to be, and that's why I circled the word, total distance. Okay, so we already had the... What was it? The seven and a half from earlier plus now it was going to be one half times, was it three times ten? Yeah. 
comes up to be 15. 7 and a half plus 15 is 22.5 units or whatever you want there. Generic label, if you don't have anything, is units, right? Do we have that? It says it at the very top. Okay. Well, yeah, it does say it, doesn't it? Funny enough, when I glanced at, yeah, I looked at her key and she had units. It's just, I overlooked it too. Okay. Um, what is the particle's position after five seconds? What's the difference here? Position. In other words, not total distance, but what we travel. That seven and a half we traveled was to the positive direction. What was that 15? Negative direction because it was negative velocity, yes? So seven and a half plus negative 15 is going to be negative. 7.5 or actually I have it written here as 7.5 units to the left okay so what's the particles position 7.5 units to the left okay Go ahead and see if I can get in 17, 18, maybe. Oh, it keeps going. Okay, we keep relating here. 17 is average velocity of the particle over the five-second time interval. Change in what? change in distance though or change in position okay so that's what yeah it, the key is do we use 22.5 or do we use the negative 7.5 and because we're doing the average velocity it is not the total distance it's the change in distance or change in I keep using the wrong word position there so change in position over time That's going to be doing the 7.5 minus 15 for 5 minus, well, just 5 if you want. It's not really 5 minus 0. And so that ends up being the negative 7.5 divided by 5, which is negative 1.5. This is what I was going to try and get to, and the bell's getting ready to ring to me. Are your answers to 15 and 16 the same? And the answer was no, because it was distance versus displacement, right? Total distance was 15 whoops, versus displacement, which is your change in position. And that was number 16. Okay. Tomorrow, I need to pick up on number 18, yes? I really hope we get through the whole graph there because it would just flow a little bit better, wouldn't it? Because now we're going to have to pick up and re-figure out what we're doing with this graph. Um, we will finish notes tomorrow for our third day on this lesson. That's a lot of days. It is. But was there any way I could have gotten this in two days? Oh, no. I don't feel like...